Boys and girls, grab your notebooks and pencils and take your seat because it's time for Pool History with Mr. Olson. Everybody make sure you check your schedules, and if it does say Pool History 101 class with Mr. Olson, you're in the right spot, and I think you all are in the right spot. So today's lesson, how did billiards begin? I did some fact checking, did some research, and it turns out it is true. Billiards did begin as a lawn game. It was played in the grass in the backyard, very similar to how croquet is played, and it's, it's really impossible for us to pinpoint an exact time of when it was invented but we know it came from 15th century northern europe and again they want they liked the game so much that they wanted to bring it indoors so they could play when it got dark out and when the weather wasn't as great the reason why a pool table's cloth is green is to simulate grass yep that's right simulate grass so a pool table's cloth is supposed to be green where does the term billiard come from? Well, it comes from the French, and it probably originated from the word billiard, which is defined as one of the wooden sticks. The game was played by royalty. Uh, your, your regular people did not play the game. That's why it was called the noble game of billiards since the early 1800s. But as time went on, there's some evidence saying that even though the game was meant for the royalty, or meant for high class, uh, there's, there's some pretty good evidence that people from all walks of life played the game. When they brought the game indoors and when the game was played outside, the balls were shoved. They weren't struck like they were in croquet and like we do now. The balls were actually shoved with wooden sticks. They called those sticks maces. And it wasn't until the late 1600s when the actual cue stick that we know today was developed. The reason why they did this was because when the ball laid near the rail, the mace was really inconvenient to use because of how large the end of it was. And what they would do in those cases is turn it around and use the butt end of it to strike the ball off of the rail. And as they did that more and more, they realized that might be the way to go in all cases. And the handle of those maces was called a Q, which meant tail. And this is how we get the word Q. And it wasn't until much, much later that they realized if they put chalk at the, on the end of the Q, it would increase friction between the ball and the Q stick. And even this was even before they put tips on the end. And that wasn't around until the, the turn of the 18th century in Europe when they also developed the leather Q-tip which allowed those players to put spin, a.k.a. English, on the ball. So it did, in fact, originate on a lawn, like croquet, and it was brought inside to get out of the weather, get out of the cold, and it sort of evolved from there. So, yes, that is how the game started. And the one thing that I thought interesting on that was cloth is green, to simulate grass. That's why it was green. So uh, I always thought it was uh, a little outrageous to see the certain certain tables uh, to have the bright colors, the pinks, the, the bright reds, you know, the lime green, uh, things of that nature. You know, as, as I think any of us true, true billiard players would probably agree with, you know, those flashy, outrageous colors drive you insane. Uh, but there's a reason why it's supposed to be green. It's supposed to it's supposed to resemble grass. So uh, that makes a lot of sense. And and it's just kind of cool to to read about how so, some of these things sort of developed. Uh, you know, they they couldn't use that mace on the rail, so you know they they turn the they turn the stick around and use the butt end of it. And next thing you know, things develop and develop and develop. So there you go. There's today's pool history lesson with Mr. Olson. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you bring your notes to me. I want to check those before you leave the class today.